shutting down schools back on the table in some districts. The teachers union in Chicago is polling members over a possible shift to remote learning as COVID cases rise. Here now is Laura Trump, Fox Business contributor. Laura, great to have you here, particularly on this issue. I got to tell you, when you hear about the union surveying teachers about wanting to go back to remote learning, I think that's the last thing parents want to hear right now. Well, I think you're right, Brian. Why aren't they surveying the parents? Why aren't the parents having a hand in this decision? I mean, after all, they're the ones ultimately that have had to deal with their kids being at home remotely learning. Think about how many women have actually left the workforce um, since kids had to endure this remote learning since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, the parents are the ones that really should be making the, the decisions here. But of course, they're deferring to the teachers unions. They've already made decisions, as uh, we know, for the CDC and the White House. So I guess no surprise there. Um, but this is such a, a bad thing, I think, for our children and for Americans overall. When you talk about taking kids out of the classroom, we know how bad it has been um, just for their education, how far behind they have ultimately fallen by doing the remote learning, which, by the way, does not work. We all have acknowledged that. Mm. It's very tough for them to remotely learn. Um, but you look at the implications uh, of mental health. Suicides are up. Substance abuse is up. Um, it has been bad all across the board for our kids. I have young kids, two and four years old, and, you know, they learn so much from interacting with their peers. So it is so bad from start to finish to even consider shutting our schools down again. And we know the science. We know that since the very beginning of the pandemic, we have known that kids can safely go back to school. So the idea that they're talking about, at least in Chicago, shutting things down, I think is awful for the kids. Um, and, and I really hope that they don't make that decision. But if we got the teachers union in charge, I hmm. think we know how they are going to rule. You know, you make a great point. Given how far behind so many students have gotten, we should not be talking about anything that perpetuates that. We've got to be talking about accelerating. How do you catch up? How do you get people back? But think about this, Laura, as well. It's not just the schools. It's not just the students. You've got parents who, at this point, really need to be getting back into the economy, into jobs, working full time. You know, you've got careers that have sort of been sidelined as well. If we don't have kids in school, Laura, we are going to have parents stuck in that same boat of being at home. This could become a huge economic drag, couldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And look, I, I heard your previous guests talk about the fact that this is not going to just end one day. We are not going to all of a sudden say, oh, COVID is over. We have to figure out, Brian, how to live with this and how to, you know, make sure that we safely move forward in life. But we have to move forward. We have to do just that. Businesses cannot survive. I, our economy cannot make it, as you just pointed out. Kids have to be back in school for their education, for the future and good of our country, for goodness sake. Um, you know, you look at places like China, who already has surpassed us in so many ways on an educational level. Think about how far behind we are falling now um, that COVID mm. has, has put us so far off track. So look, all around, I think that people are starting to realize this is not just going to disappear one day. COVID is a part of our everyday lives going forward. We're fortunate that the latest strain, the Omicron variant, um, has not been as deadly as the previous. And as the doctor you just spoke to in the last segment said, hopefully this gets us on the track to a more normalcy, to possible herd immunity. And I think all around that could be a positive thing. We've got to learn how to live mm. with this. We've got to learn how to carry on our lives. Laura, really quickly, while I have you, I got to get your take on President Biden giving a huge federal response to COVID as a candidate at most of his presidency, coming back yesterday, reversing course, talking about the state's taking the lead, but then today tweeting about his federal plan again. Laura, what kind of leadership are we getting? And do we have any hope of getting out of this with all of this flip-flopping? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I think we're all getting whiplash from what's going on with this White House, with the President Biden. Uh, look, there was so much fear-mongering that went on and scare tactics used by the Democrats during the campaign last year. They all talked about how Donald Trump had failed at, at conquering COVID. We, we know you can't ultimately do that. But then you fast forward, there have been more deaths mm. under Joe Biden as president than Donald Trump as president. 
Obviously, the, the Democrats and Joe Biden had absolutely no plan for this. They lied about that. And now he said, well, we're just going to give up as the federal government. Oh, wait a minute. No, we're not. No one knows what to believe. It's why they have no credibility. Mm. It's why his, his uh, ratings, his polling is so bad right now as president. No one buys it anymore. And gosh, I, I just wish we could get a straight answer from the White House. It's the confusion, Laura, that is impossible for businesses to plan within, parents to plan within, families to plan within. And I feel like we just got a big old dose of it over the last two days. We got to leave it there. We're out of time, Laura. Thanks so much for joining us. Always great to see you. Thanks, Brian.